What's up guys and welcome to this video about dependency injection in Swift. In this video we will see how we can create or define a property wrapper which we can then use in our whole project to inject our dependencies so we don't have to manage them manually. As you can see I've created a Swift UI project here but this approach of the dependency injection property wrapper has not nothing to do with Swift UI. I won't do any UI logic here so you can follow along if you use Storyboard or Swift UI. All right, let's start and first of all we need to define our DI for dependency injection utils. So we can say DI utils and in here we will have a public protocol which is our injection key and this injection key requires to define this associated type value whoever conforms to this injection key. Then we also have a static var current value which is our self.value and is gettable and setable. Then we can define a struct injected values and in here we can then define some subscripts to make this injected values easily accessible. First of all, we have a private static var current, which is our injected values, so the only instance. And then we have a static subscript with the generic type k. And this takes a key with our k.type and returns a k.value where k is of type injection key. So this k is of type injection key so it has a value a defined value and we take the type of our k as a parameter here and then we need to define the getter and setter and for get we say key dot current value and for the set we have key dot current value is equal to new value so this means this current value is defined in our injection key up here and this new value here is of type injection key dot value it's available in our set block inside such a sub subscript because this subscript allows a really short syntax and if you set such an injection value with the equal sign then the setter gets executed and yeah we always know that there's a new value so we can refer to this new value here which is uh, kind of automatically generated for us then we need to define another subscript which will take a so-called writable key path so static subscript this time we have a generic type t and this key path is of type writable key path of type injection values and our generic type t and this will return also our generic type t and in here we again need to define the get and the setter so for the get we can say current and the key path will be our key path and i think we need to make a space up here yeah this should work now and for the setter we say current for the key path we again pass the key path is equal to new value so what the heck does this do this key path is a writable key path of type injected values which is our struct here and a generic type t which can be anything to so we make this generic that we can apply the dependency injection principle for every object later on for the get value we get the generic type t returned and here we define that we have a generic type t so and now the concepts behind such a key path is that we can access our object or a reference to this object if we pass a key path and if we also pass a key path on another place in our application and the third place in the application then we always get a reference to the same object so it's kind of a singleton which is accessible from everywhere uh, let me quickly show you this uh, how this works later and here we can uh, pass a key path like this uh, or is it like this i don't know if the uh, dot comes before or after right now and we say here key path repository and then we can say var repository of type repository 
And if this is the key path, if we use this key path on another place in the application, we would also get the same reference to this repository. And yeah, this is uh, it for this subscript. And here the setter just sets a new value. Maybe we want to update it for test cases or something like this. All right, now we are good to go to define our property wrapper. So we can say add property wrapper. And this will be a struct injected. So our property wrapper can be uh, called later on with add uh, injected like this. And this property wrapper has also a generic type T or defines a generic type T. And in here we will have a private let key path of type writable key path, injected values and our generic type T. So this property wrapper works closely together with this injected values. And here we have a var wrapped value, which we need to define for a property wrapper of type T. And we get this wrapped value by saying injected values and pass our key path like this. And for the setter, we say injected values pass our key path is equal to new value. The last thing we need to do is to define an init block for our property wrapper. And here we pass the key path, which is a writable key path of type injected values and our generic type T. And then we simply say self.keypath is equal to key path. And let me quickly show you how this will look like then. So we can say add injected, which is our property wrapper, our defined one here. And then we call the init block. And in this init block, we can then pa pass our key path. So we say repository or network service or something like this. And then we can say var well, repository of type repository. And this is the init block of our property wrapper here. All right, okay, these are our dependency injection utils and we can now make use of them. So I will create an example protocol here for a kind of a network class. So let's call it example network service. This will be a protocol example network service. We don't need to define this here and we have also a class example network service implement which conforms to this protocol it's always a good practice to hide such a concrete implementation behind the protocol and then pass the protocol around then you can easily test your business logic and switch the underlying network technology or the underlying network logic and now we can make use of our dependency injection utils I will put this dependency injection stuff inside this file. Normally I would use another file, but for the sake of simplicity, I think this is fine. So first of all, we need a provider key for our example network service. This will be a private struct, example network service provider key, which needs to conform to our injection key we defined in our dependency injection utils. And then we override the current value and we now can define what's the default value of our example network service. So this will be of type example network service, but the, the object we initialize here is our concrete implementation. So our example network service implement. Now we have our example network service provider key and can extend our injection values, which we defined in our dependency injection utils so extension injected values and in here we create a var var example network service of type example network service and then we need to define the get and the setter so for the getter we have self and we use our example network service provider key dot self for the getter we can copy and paste this and here we say new value and change this to set. All right, okay. Um, I will quickly explain everything. Or no, let me let me first uh, show you this uh, how this works and that 
this is really working and after that at the end of the video if you are interested in then i will show you the whole process and how this actually works so let's go to the content view and in case if you are not using swift ui then uh, you can just take any other place and uh, make use of this property wrapper and in here we can say injected our property wrapper and for the key we pass example network service then we say var example network service of type example network service normally i wouldn't uh, access a network service on the ui but uh, for the sake of this tutorial i think this is okay and let's go to our example network service define a functional so fun print and the concrete implementation of this print functional is just uh, print i <laughs> and in here we can uh, then uh, remove this and create a button and we take this action and for the action we say example network service dot print and for the label we simply use the text uh, click and then we can um, uh, launch this well this is a really dumb example uh, let's change its name it complains because of the default print method so let's say print me and here uh, print me as well and on the protocol as well then go to product and build and uh, the error is gone and we can uh, now launch this so let's click on the button and now you can see in the console uh, high is printed all right okay dependency injection works and in case you want to change this default implementation of this example network service, for example, with a fake network service for your test cases, then you could simply go to your example network service, define another class. Of course, you would do this in your test environment, but for the simplicity, I will do it here. So example network service fake, which conforms to example network service, overrides the print me functionality, print something like hi2. And then also in your test environment, you could just change this default implementation here. You could exchange this to example network service fake, and you have another provider key then, which you pass inside your tests environment. So you get test behavior. And I think this is very powerful. Another thing what you could do is, and let me go to a content view and copy this, you could go, to your classes where you need another implementation and then you could simply say example no not in here in our function example network service is equal to example network service fake so you can also set this if you don't want to make this settable then you could um, go to your dependency injection utils and change the corresponding behavior all right okay this should be it for those who are interested in uh, explaining the details I will do a little recap on our DI utils and this extension and our provider key struct. I will just cut this out and paste it inside our DI utils so that everything is together. And yeah, let's start on the top with our injection key. This injection key protocol defines an associated time and requires to define it in a class which confirms to this injection key protocol. Then it has a current value um, uh, which is a static var and has the self value type and is gettable and settable. Okay, so far so good. Now we come to this injection uh, injected values struct. We will come to this current self instance later. Let's talk about this subscript. They generate kind of syntactic sugar for us so that we can easily access and set some values which are of type injected values. You, you will see this when I copy this extension here because this is injected values so we will copy this var and put it in here and now let's have a closer look at this subscript because this subscript allows us to make this function gettable like this so in here we have a key of type k.type and if we get then we get the k.value where k is of type injection key 
And then we can say that this k has a current value because our injection key protocol up here defines that there is a current value. And if we take now this private struct, our provider key, and paste it down here so that we can see everything, then we can see that this example network service provider key is of type injection key because it conforms to this protocol and it defines the current value here. And so we can pass this example network serv service provider key dot self inside our self instance here to get the corresponding example network service implement like this. And we can also set it. And this static subscript allows us to do this. So the K here is just a generic type so that we can do this with every kind of object. So that we not only can do this with an example network service, we can do this with every kind of object we want. Let's come to this subscript, which also defines a generic type T for the same reason I mentioned before to make this um, uh, possible for every kind of object and classes. And here we get a key path, which is of type writable key path, because we want to get and set values. If we would only want to get values, then we could remove this writable here. And this writable key path is of type injected values and our generic type T. And now the thing is that we get the instance or the reference to our instance of our current object here, which we defined here. We need to pass this key path and we can pass this key path everywhere in the application. So we always get the reference to the same object and the same thing for our set value. And yeah, this is uh, this static subscript for, and we will see why this works in our property wrapper or how this works and how this is used in our property wrapper here. Let's come to this subscript, which also defines a generic type T for the same reason I mentioned before to make this um, uh, possible for every kind of object and classes. And here we get a key path, which is of type writable key path, because we want to get and set values. If we would only want to get values, then we could remove this writable here. And this writable key path is of type injected values and our generic type T. And now we get a reference with this key path to the properties of our singleton injected values object. So um, if we say add injected and we pass um, example network service as the key, then we will get a reference to this object because this key path, this object is a property of our current value. So this current value and the key path for it. And so we can get access to this example network service. And as we've already seen, this example network service variable is accessed via this provider key here. And we can also set it via this provider key. So I hope this got clear and I know this is a little bit complicated, but if you don't completely understand that, go through it again, or you can also ask me via direct message or in the comment. All right, okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something also about all those details with the subscripts, generic types and all that stuff. If not, if you're not interested in the details, you can also just apply this property wrapper to manage your dependencies for dependency injection.